business driving down the highway and a human trafficker who was smuggling several individuals was being pursued by law enforcement and to try to get away from law enforcement he began shooting the oncoming traffic striking her vehicle several times and forcing her off the road hoping it, the dps would stop the chase you know that's another example of of what an open border looks like This 21-year-old from Brownsville, Texas, was carrying three Guatemalan nationals and one Mexican national from the border to San Antonio. He had a Ruger 5.7 pistol in the trunk. The one thing that's very unique about border crime and deaths relating to the border is that they're all preventable. If we had a secure border, every single person that dies from fentanyl or an illegal alien that murders someone that could have been prevented. They would have been here in the first place. We know that between August of 2021 and August of 2022, 107,735 American lives were lost to drug poisoning. We know who is responsible. The Sinaloa cartel and the Jalisco or CJNG cartel, both cartels in Mexico, are responsible for the vast majority of fentanyl that is coming into the United States. Those two cartels dominate the entire global fentanyl supply chain. The cartels move the fentanyl powder and the fake pills into the United States. They sell a lot of it on social media. It is in the United States. So far, it has facilitated air travel for 320,000 illegal immigrants by admission. This is in addition to the others who travel to the U.S.-Mexico border and surrender themselves to authorities to enter the amnesty system. Now, behind this program is a government app that is gaining more attention, known as CBP-1, Customs and Border Protection 1. And it allows migrants to schedule appointments with U.S. authorities to illegally enter the United States. Let me show you this first. Daily Mail. Joe Biden's administration has admitted transporting migrants on secret flights into the U.S., and lawyers for its immigration agencies claim revealing the locations could create national security vulnerabilities. They're not telling us, in other words, because they say that if they tell us what's happening, then it's a vulnerability for national security folks. They're flying hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants into the country, and they say that we're the threat. Now, Customs and Border Protection, it says, has refused to disclose information about a program last year secretly arranging flights for thousands of undocumented immigrants from foreign airports directly to U.S. cities. It means that while record numbers of migrants were flowing over the southern border last year, and you're the paying for White this shit, directly transporting them into the country. As a guardian program, so that we do have staff members that are armed. Um, we've added panic buttons, you know, in different buildings and in the classrooms. Our elementary school, middle school, and high school all just kind of are, are side by side. So um, we've got 571 students on that side of Ann Street. It is not uncommon for us to go into a shelter in place at least once a week. And unfortunately, um, even when it is just once a week, it may be multiple times during the day. At that point, students and staff are not allowed to leave, you know, their buildings until we get the all clear. My radio stays on my desk because I will be the first one um, to hear or I may hear a siren coming and I will radio to the other staff. Let's do a hold in place until we can get an all clear. I would say over the last two years, instead of seeing it get better, it's actually gotten a little worse. You can't help but be concerned about the what if, you know, what time is it going to happen next time? Where are our students going to be? And these chases happen so frequently and so often without warning that I do worry about their safety in the simplest act of crossing a street. Flown all around the country as well using your tax dollars. Now, this was actually exposed to an extent back in 2022. The Biden administration was, and frankly still is, being extremely secretive about it. Meanwhile, they're letting Texas take the blame for it, and they're not standing up and yep, saying, hey, I'm actually, we've done it. Videos. Right? The Daily Mail said that secret government charter flights, this is back in 2022, paid for by taxpayer funds are quietly transporting migrants from the southern border to other U.S. cities 
across the U.S. The flights which take off from border cities like El Paso, Texas, are taking bus loads of illegal aliens to various cities around the country, including Jacksonville, Florida, Alexandria, Louisiana, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe right into those swing states, right? Right, right into here those in swing Georgia, states too. And those swing counties, which can determine the outcome of future elections, possibly, right? Now, it notes that lawmakers are demanding more transparency about the flights and where the migrants are going with some states and regional leaders alleging that they were not informed about the relocation plans. The government, in other words, the federal government, is hiding this even from the local level politicians. It notes that Health and Human Services has misled me, <coughs> this is according to one of the congressmen, <coughs> has, misled me, has misled me or lied to me several times. I have asked, they actually told me any flights coming into Pennsylvania, we will notify you and the local schools. Congressman Dan Muser told News Nation, and he said they didn't. They haven't notified us once. In other words, the federal government is hiding this even politically, and you have to ask why they are doing that. Transparency, it says, comes as the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention plans next week, this is last year, to end restrictions known as Title 42 that have prevented migrants up until that time from seeking asylum under U.S. law and international treaty on grounds of preventing the spread of COVID-19. Border officials are preparing for a surge in the number of migrants and charter flights by our own government when the health order expires on May 23rd. And again, that was That's why that health order expired. Now, look, a lot of this is also just being facilitated by an app that the government created for the illegal immigrants. This is being run through U.S. Customs and Border Protection, <laughs> and the app that you can download on your smartphone is called CBP-1. You can schedule an appointment with the government to illegally enter the United States. It lets the illegals book appointments with Customs and Border Protection, and they can even set appointments on when they want to illegally enter the United States, surrender themselves, and then enter the asylum scam to take away your tax dollars for free houses, free food, and free everything else. Let me show you the website. This is the actual website for this program. This is on the actual Customs and Border Protection website, the official one. It says here, on October 28th, 2020, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, launched the free CBP-1 mobile application on... We're getting a little everything. We're catching sex offenders, murderers, people that have been deported for various heinous crimes.
Play stores. CBP1 is a mobile application that serves as a single porter, portal to a variety of CBP services. Through a series of guided questions, the app directs each type of user to the appropriate services based on their needs. Maybe you just need some free money, right? <laughs> CBP1 is available now, it says, to schedule appointments. CBP1 and the advanced submission and appointment scheduling process are free to use. Non-citizens, i.e. illegal immigrants who want to come here illegally, located in central or northern Mexico who seek to travel to the United States, travel, may use the U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP-1 app to submit information in advance and schedule an appointment to present travel. themselves <laughs> at the below southwest border land ports of entry. And these areas where they can go and surrender themselves are these. Arizona, Nogales, Texas, Brownsville, Eagle Pass, Hidalgo, Laredo, and El Paso. In California, Calexico, and San Ysidro. Folks, I actually went myself personally to Eagle Pass and to San Ysidro to watch this, and it's real. Now, they note further in, CBP strongly encourages non-citizens without prior authorization. Suspended deportations of illegal aliens. Stopped adding illegal immigrants to the Remain in Mexico program. Strengthened the DACA program for children who were brought over illegally. Released a sweeping immigration package to Congress that included amnesty for millions of illegal immigrants. And from that day forward, we're getting our butts handed to us because of that. Dedicated lands for those with CBP-1 appointments. You have entered the fast track of illegal immigration. Now, look, again, I personally witnessed this project, this process at both Eagle Pass in Texas and in San Ysidro in California. Now, I'm not sure if they were using the app, the people I watched, but I did witness how the system works. And basically, this is it. These individuals <clears throat> illegally enter the country. There are just wide open sections of the border wall, right? They illegally enter the country, surrender themselves to Border Patrol and other agents, they get taken to a processing facility, they register in the wait list for asylum, which then gives them access to all the welfare benefits. Then they put the migrants on buses and they drop them off in the United States. We found out now that during that interim stage, the Department of Homeland Security also gives them free airplane tickets. And so once they're dropped off on these buses, they also have airplane tickets to anywhere they want to go in the country. And they literally just drop them off on a street corner, usually at bus stations or train station. I videotaped this, folks. I'm going to be showing it all to you in a documentary I have coming out at the end of the month. Now, look, by that time, again, when they're dropped off, they have plane tickets. The by the end of May, Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared a state of disaster and launched Operation Lone Star, a way for small counties to get resources they need to beef up their response. This is an operation... It's going to be similar to what we've done in the past, where we provide a surge of resources to the border. Under Operation Lone Star, more Texas troopers were sent to border areas to try to stop the human smuggling. Texas troopers stopped this truck. But the occupants bailed out and jumped a nearby ranch fence. Troopers, deputies, and Border Patrol agents caught up with them. See that man right there? Claiming to be a Mexican Marine. You want to see my? You want to see my pictures? You want to see my pictures? Let me see. Okay, hold on. All scratches come usually whenever they jump into the bush. The driver said he spent four years in the Mexican military fighting against the cartels. So as you can see, we don't face regular people when they're out here. Yeah, because for, for the cartels, I, I fight for the cartels. He said he's lived in Texas for more than 10 years, working in the roofing industry. He took the truck from his job, without permission, to pick up the three Mexican nationals who he said are his friends. He has a warrant out for his arrest for drunk driving in San Antonio.
The three men had paid $220 to get to the U.S.-Mexico border. They said the Mexican guide took them to the border, and then the cartel took the rest of their money. They were in debt another $5,000 to get from the border to Dallas, where they were planning to get a job in construction to pay off the debt. Of Haiti was assassinated in 2021. 
And of course, they said that given the situation, Biden said that sending American troops to stabilize the country was not on the agenda. It notes that Haiti's interim government last week, this is again in 2021, asked the United States and the United Nations to deploy troops to protect key infrastructure following President Hovenel Moise's assassination. Biden signaled he was not open to the request, which comes as he is drawing down U.S. forces in Afghanistan this summer, again, 2021, and said, quote, this according to Biden, we're only sending American Marines to our embassy. The idea of sending American forces to Haiti is not on the agenda. Now, Matthias Pierre, Haiti's elections minister, told the Associated Press Thursday that he believes the request for U.S. troops is relevant, given what he called a fragile situation and the need to create a secure <laughs> environment for elections scheduled to happen in 120 days, again, at the time. Now, keep in mind this point about securing the Haitian elections, because our government has been involved in securing their elections. A couple will they'll be going to the Kitty County Jail for processing. It will be arrested for human smuggling, and she will be most likely released due to a housing issue. She was the passenger, and she'll have a uh, warrant issue for her arrest later for the same charge. She has her cell phone, so she can call and make some arrangements to get picked up, and the six will go to BP for processing. Border Patrol found out later that this man from Colombia is wanted in the United States for child sex offenses. Hey, writing, we will use every tool and strategy to secure our border until President Biden fulfills his constitutional duty to enforce federal immigration laws already on the books. Immigration advocates have criticized the law, citing their fears of increased racial profiling in Texas, where Latinos represent 40% of the population. The Supreme Court's temporary pause will hold until March 13th, instead of the law going into effect on March 10th. This break now gives the court additional time to review the case. Last week, a federal judge in Texas blocked the state from implementing the law. In his ruling, he wrote that allowing the Texas measure to take effect could open the gates for other states to pass their own versions of immigration law. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. No Iverson just surrender, so you tack on invading law enforcement to the charge. Um, so usually there's more than one crime that's being committed when an apprehension or an arrest is made. And so it's usually evading arrest, um, criminal trespass. And so prosecuting for two different criminal charges is better, obviously, than one if you want to create a deterrent. Two out of three migrants traveling to the U.S.-Mexico border say they experienced violence on the way, including abduction, theft, extortion, torture, and rape, according to Doctors Without Borders. Patrol drops off dozens of Chinese nationals every single day right here at this transit center in San Diego, California. Now, these smugglers train Chinese nationals not to talk to media, but we wanted to find out why they're coming to America, and we managed to get a few answers. I feel that in China, there is no freedom of speech, no human rights, no emphasis on universal values, and no freedom of religion. It is an atheistic region, which contradicts my values because I myself am a Christian. The current situation in China, under the leadership of the country's leaders, is deteriorating rapidly. You know it's really in dire straits, and the ordinary people are all complaining. 
You know, this is the scene I see in China. In my opinion, the fundamental reason for this is the lack of faith. Not all of them criticize the Chinese regime, but they admit that it's better to live in the U.S. than in China. China's economy has not been doing so well in the past two years. It's not as good as we as we had hoped. It's definitely not comparable to the United States, to be honest. Some of the Chinese men coming to America might not be coming for a better life. That's what Lieutenant Colonel Pete Chambers told me. He's a former Green Beret who was also stationed at the border. The most dangerous thing would be the cells that are coming in. Okay, this is the cell. What I mean by that is groups of men that come in that, that are networked to each other that could then do something nefarious later on when they're told to do something nefarious later on. That would be a cell. Now, Chambers told me one of the most important things is to conduct thorough background checks of all individuals coming to the United States. Reporting from San Diego, California, Arian Pastar, NTD News. Biden administration you might have noticed how out. top four is something more sinister. These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary Hollywood Takeover, China's Control in the Film Industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda, the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. Stuff like that. But for the middle class, working class people, it had become more and more difficult to live here and to raise your family and to buy a house. So you think we're losing this edge that we had, kind of the, everyone, this California brand is a big brand globally. I think so. You're living out of state and you have a job offer in California. You're, you're, you're starting a family. First thing you want to know is how much it costs to live here. What's the price of a home? And you can't afford it. And as a result, a lot of people who <coughs> want workers can't get them from other states because uh, other states know, the, the people know, the cost of living is just too high. So, um, no, I don't think we're leading the nation. I, I can't think of a single category where we're leading the, leading the nation. I know Gavin Newsom had his debate with uh, Ron DeSantis and talked about how great the state was. And in my opinion, Ron DeSantis didn't do a very effective job of, of, of countering some of the stuff that he said. But we got crime. Uh, as I said, we have uh, very high cost of living. Uh, our tax structure, uh, highest state income tax uh, in, in the country. Our, sc our test scores are near the bottom. Uh, job creation, uh, uh, dead, ranked dead last with one other state. Um, you tell me where we're, where we're, where we're ahead, what we're, we're leading on. I, I don't see it. And is there a way, in your opinion, is there a way to turn this around? And what does it take? So, someone asked me, if you were advising Gavin Newsom, what would you say? And I said, I would say resign. <laughs> um, but the problem is, even if he did, his lieutenant governor is just the same. She even just recently said that she uh, thought that Donald Trump ought not be on the, on the ballot. Uh, following the lead of the Colorado Supreme Court. So she's just living under Barack Obama, which I'll get into in a minute. Now, back to this story in 2021, though. Note that this individual also said Biden's comment that sending U.S. troops was not on the agenda still leaves the option open. And yeah. he said, quote, this is not a closed door. The evolution of the situation will determine the outcome. And we may be watching that evolution of the situation right now as we speak, folks. Now, he added that in the meantime, the government is doing everything we can to stabilize the country. Uh, return to a normal environment and organize elections while trying to come to a political agreement with most political parties. Uh -huh. Now, look, the calls for U.S. troops to deploy to Haiti continued. And remember, it was also about allegedly stabilizing the country's elections. Let me show you this from 2022. This was one year after that report it has showed you. It said this, according to foreign policy. In October, the government of Ariel Henry, Haiti's de facto prime minister and president, because they assassinated the last one, remember, called for a foreign military intervention and said that the immediate deployment of a specialized armed force in sufficient quantity to stop the street gangs that are terrorizing the population and cutting off access to Haiti's ports, most crucially, the one that receives and stores and what Haiti's imports of oil and gas. In other words, the same thing happening right Continue now has been happening people. for a few years there. It notes, though, that, and this is again from 2022, in the nearly 90 years since that first U.S. occupation ended, U.S. and U.S.-backed forces have remained the most constant factor in Haiti training and, armed Haitian, and arming Haitian militaries, meddling in elections, under Barack Obama, by the way, and alternate, alternately, 
uh, reinstating and overthrowing Haiti's leaders. In the last 30 years, U.S. troops have invaded or otherwise intervened in Haiti three times. In post-coup invasions in 1994 and 2004, and to quell feared unrest, which they say, this is foreign policy, by the way, never materialized after the 2010 earthquake, which, of course, the Clinton Foundation was involved in facilitating the funds for, which they took mostly for themselves, and then tried moving children across the border and got yeah, trouble I remember that. trafficking them. Now, note that in the intervening time, the United States explicitly outsourced its occupations to other countries' troops. Now, I would say this is not to blame on the United States, but instead of the United Nations, because it says, first, a UN mission, United Nations, from 1993 to 1997, and then a mostly Brazilian-led multinational force that controlled Haiti's streets and rural areas from 2004 to 2019. In other words, right up until that time when, again, 2020, 2021, and they were asking for the U.S. to bring in troops, Brazil had been there during that, you know, right before that. You know, it's the latter force, known by its French initials as uh, Mousta, left as its main gifts to Haiti, an abandoned generation of children fathered by UN troops, which you might remember the reports of United Nations troops were like going on rape sprees. And yep. notes that a catastrophic cholera epidemic started by a battalion from Nepal. Two years after the last UN mission left in July 2021, Haitian President Jovenel Moise was assassinated at his home in a suburb of Port, Port Au Prince. Now, this is going to be really important. Remember, we talked about that assassination of the former Haitian president, or again in July 2021, which put the new puppet in place and so on, right? I'll get this, folks. Moise, the guy who was assassinated, was the hand pick successor of Mikel Sweetie Mickey Martelli, a popular senior turned right wing nationalist who became president thanks to the electoral interference of the Obama administration in the post-2010 earthquake election. Remember, they said, we need to deploy troops to Earth to Haiti to help with the earthquake, you know, resettlement or whatever else like that. Never really had problems with it. Clinton Foundation diverted the fund and took most of it. And the Obama administration... And you still have to deal with the state uh, legislature. They're the ones who pass all these stupid bills. There's a bill that uh, just went into effect. If you're a large toy retailer, you have to have a gender-neutral toy aisle. So I guess if your kid doesn't know if he's a girl or a boy, you have some safe uh, space where he or she can, can buy a toy, I guess. Um, they've set up a, a commission to determine the wages of fast food workers. So not only do we have a jacked up minimum wage, but going forward, there's now going to be a board, a group of people to determine if you're running a, a fast food operation to determine what the wages are going to be for your employees. Who thinks of stuff like that? Where does that come from? Gavin Newsom also signed uh, a bill reducing the penalties for gang related crime. Why? Because most of the gangs in California are black and brown, and therefore to punish them would be to punish black and brown people disproportionately, even though they're disproportionately gang members. This is how they think. This is how they reason. Insane. Interference according to foreign policy. This is according to foreign policy, folks. It notes that Martelli had been allowed to go through to the second round after then U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton accused the sitting president of fraud to ben benefit his own protege, though the plot that led to Moise's assassination remains unsolved. Tell she this much is clear. Of fraud. Guess what? <laughs> According to foreign policy a couple years ago, quote, he was killed by a group of gunmen mostly consisting of Colombians and claiming to be agents of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA. It notes that, indeed, at least two of them were, in fact, former DEA informants. A New York Times investigation found evidence that the men may have been looking for a list of drug traffickers Moise intended, was intending to expose. The Intercept reported that several had received U.S. military training. Hmm. Further in, and very serious terror threats. From what I've been told, this is not about making sure the subways are safe from dangerous criminals. It's about protecting us from credible threats of terrorism 
sparked, ironically, we would think, by the mass illegal migration which our own government is facilitating. Now, it seems the Biden administration, though, is doubling down on secrecy. They do not want to tell you what is happening or how they are doing it. In fact, the Justice Department even put a gag order on immigration judges recently. They will not allow the judges to speak with journalists. In Mexico, how authorities were able to track him down overseas. Jonathan. And winter still rains as temperatures take a deep plunge overnight. How low we go? I'm tracking it all next to my Fox 5 storm team forecast. Cited even by foreign policy, which is by no means a conservative news outlet, as a method that installed the then leader. There may have been as many assassinations, or sorry, there have been many assassinations of the country's leaders over the years as well. And this continues into what we're now watching take place. You can't fully understand what's going on in Haiti without knowing this background. And look, Haiti, you could argue, maybe it's not the fault of the U.S. or the United Nations. Haiti has been an absolute mess through most of its history. Again, since around the time of the founding of the United States of America. It was a French colony. It was one of the nicer parts of the world. The black slaves revolted, murdered every single French man, woman, and child. The country has been unstable ever since. It has never been stable after that, unless, of course, the U.S. or U.N. was bringing stability externally. And every time they pull out, it very quickly devolves into chaos and violence. Every single time. But, you know, back to what's been happening recently. The whole move to bring U.S. or United Nations troops to Haiti culminated last year. Remember, it was not just proposed, right? It wasn't just proposed as a U.S. operation. It was never just said, bring the Marines here. It was always proposed as a United Nations operation. For a lot of people who, who care about economics. As you, you must know who Paul Krugman is, K-R-U-G-M-A-N. He's a columnist with the New York Times, an economist, probably the most well-known economist in the country because he writes the New York Times from having a column there for decades. <laughs> he wrote negatively about the minimum wage. So, he, before he did a 180. Um, and, and the reason I asked the question was not to play got you, because any economist that she could think of had written negatively about the minimum wage. Milton Friedman said the minimum wage was probably the most anti-Negro, shows you how long ago he said this, anti-Negro law on the statute books, because what it does, it discriminates against people with low skills. Because if you have low skills and you're willing to work for down here, the government says, I'm sorry, he must pay you here. You're not worth it, so he's not going to hire you. And so I kept waiting for her to give me in the name of an economist because I know all the major ones. I would have said, well, he wrote negatively about the minimum wage. She couldn't think of a single one. And they're so lazy. The whole article, whole interview is on YouTube. You can look at it yourself. And it says, Larry Elder talks about this, 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 and the minimum wage. They removed that segment from the interview because she looked so foolish, but they were too lazy to take it out of the title. So if you're looking at, the, at that interview, uh, you're looking for the part where, where they talk about the minimum wage because it says that in the title. It's gone. They took it out, which is yeah. why, by the way, I rarely like to do interviews that are not live uh, because if I interview a left-wing person and it's not a live interview uh, and I say something, ask something that makes them look foolish, they will take it out. And it's happened many times. Now, Larry, was there a point you figured out that these policies, like they, they're causing a problem in your government executive? It says the just the Justice Department is warning one of its employee groups that it can no longer speak publicly without prior agency approval, raising concerns that the Biden administration is placing a gag order on certain workers, despite a promise to be their advocates. The issue stems from the National Association of Immigration Judges losing its recognition as a union. It's now a government operation, apparently. Leading justices tell the organization any rights it previously enjoyed as part of a collective bargaining agreement are no longer valid. NAIJ has represented immigration judges for more than 50 years and has never previously faced restrictions on its public testimony. 
And one of the individuals who spoke on behalf of the NIAJ leaders said this, it's, pretty, it's a pretty draconian directive. It's pretty unprecedented. It notes that NIAJ has occasionally used its platform to speak out against policy changes it views as harmful to the roles of immigration judges. The group has regularly made itself available to the media, testified before Congress, and participated in panel discussions. It has frequently derided its placement within justice, as one of the individuals reiterated in the recent congressional testimony, saying it should instead be made an independent court under Article I of the Constitution.